Declare state of emergency on affected areas, says Peter Obi, as Minister of Works and Housing, Fashola, attributes disregard for town planning as cause of flooding. And Nigeria won't be stampeded by US-UK travel advisories, says federal government. This is Plus Politics. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Minister of Works and Housing Babatunde Fashola and his information counterpart Lai Mohammed have blamed the attitude of some Nigerians for the devastating flood throughout the country. There have been extensive flooding in 30 of the country's 36 states. Several people have been killed in the flood and properties such as houses and farmlands have been destroyed. Also, presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, has visited Ibi local government area of Taraba state to sympathize with the flood victims in the state. Obi, during his visit, called on the federal government to declare a state of emergency on all flood-affected areas across the country. Joining us live to discuss this is Oladotun Hassan, a legal practitioner and also the Secretary General of Nigeria Ethnic Nationalities Youth Leaders Council. Good, after good evening and welcome to the program it's a pleasure to be on your program. Okay, the minister has blamed the flooding on Nigerians. Do you tow his part or you have a different opinion to this? Well, uh, you know, it, uh, it's an unfortunate uh, scenario for a global issue that, uh, that is related to climate change effect and the lackadaisical attitude of our government in being responsive to managing an emergency crisis as we have on the issue of the spiral flooding that we currently faced with uh, in about uh, 30 of the 36 states of the Federation and uh, it's still counting. So it's quite um, an unbearable pain for a lot of Nigerians at this critical point in time. And for Nigerians to receive the blame from government is, uh, is highly uh, irresponsible, uh, is unethical. It does not show that, um, uh, that um, sympathy, that empathy from the government. So in as much that there is a need for attitudinal change and corrections on how issues ought to be managed, issues of flooding uh, even in law, um, it's you know uh, it is called force major because these are issues you it is beyond human control. These are issues of environment, and in dealing with it, government must be able to draw up a line of rescue, of repairs, and also ensuring the life of the people that are affected are placed back on the right path. So if the government is trying to draw up a line of blame on the people, to me and to several Nigerians, it does not show the empathy. Um, for It's not just a federal government uh, issue. This is a national war that has been declared by nature. So, and for us to rescue ourselves, we need to put up all emergency risk management uh, uh, techniques in rescuing the affected people, especially ensuring that there is adequate fund. We know we have the ecological fund, but a lot of all these are siphoned. And, um, uh, uh, you know, it goes to private hands. So in this respect, these are areas of intervention that government needs to really come to rescue, provide uh, uh, IDP camps that will be, be uh, beatable, not just IDP camps that will look like a a a a, um, a poultry. We need to put people's life in good condition. IDP that we are talking about is to having like a five-star hotel, three-star hotel, whereby you can accommodate 
people conveniently within the period of this disaster. So Nigerians ought to be to be um, to be treated well at this critical point in time. So it is for me to correct that on us on behalf of all Nigerians that we the the government who was that apology for making it look as if it is our our blame as Nigerians to elect them in power in order to do what they are supposed to do. These kind of issues require government to be proactive. How are they going to be proactive? Clearing of drainages ought to have been done right before now. Ensuring the road networks in various communities are properly drawn up. You go to some communities today, there is no drainage, there is no proper road channels, there are no proper town plannings. So this will accumulate to the risk when there is disaster of this nature. And they should understand this is not a disaster whereby you have to blame the other party or you have to blame the government or you have to blame a political party for it. No, this is a collective responsibility. And we must show empathy and love. Those that have money, the rich in developed countries or even not just developed countries, where there is love, you see individuals donating materials, donating their houses, donating spaces to accommodate those that are down. So we believe this natural course of turning things around should be part of our orientation as far as the country is concerned. And there is a need for proper information. Nigerians should not just see it as um, spiritual. Like in Nigeria, everything is like, oh, the, the world is turning, the world is ending. No, these are not, it's a global effect of global warming. And the earth is shifting. And there is an effect of how situations like this needed to be managed with um, the, uh, the, 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 um, the, the, uh, the agency in, uh, uh, in charge of the, the weather informed us earlier before now that we will be confronted with these challenges. So we ought to be prepared at least we've gotten the information less than 13 months now, over a year ago, that the information is that by next year, the terrestrial uh, um, rain um, and every, uh, every flooding will be increased. So we ought to be proactive before now. But because we don't prepare, we always, plan to fail in most of our scenario. We are too eager for a fire brigade approach. And that is why we've lost over 600 souls. Thousands of houses have been, um, maybe people, uh, millions of people have been displaced across the country. So the essence of this is that there is a need for urgent national call. Yes, we must commend the, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, but it shouldn't be a campaign slogan. Beyond him just wanting to use that, let the government, he can also play his own active role beyond visitation. This is what I've been able to mobilize, fund. That is what the people need, not just to empathize with them. Yes, the, the presidential candidate of the APC donated 100 million. The presidential candidate of the PDP donated 50 million. There ought to be something also from his own side too, because the essence of empathy in time of need is how much you can stretch to rescue not how much we can always call point in dealing with the issues at hand. So there is a need for legislative intervention, executive intervention, and also somehow, if the judiciary can sumoto mandate the government to provide subtle and uh, uh, intervention and engagement, especially in dealing with some critical sector that have been affected as a result of the flooding. You can't go to court with your full robe as a lawyer now, you can't do some other things that you are supposed to be doing on a very daily something. Then there must also be inconvenience um, um, bill that will be passed in order to allow contracts, um, every other uh, 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 um, developmental plan that this force major would have affected. Then damages, how are we going to cure it? This is not just a day or a month that is going to take, it's going to take us some number of period. So this period needs to be captured. We need to know how to manage it and we need to be deliberate in dealing with the issues. Now, but actually, um, 
first of all, we needed to find out if there was something that the individuals or the society could do. Because if you just say it's a, it's a product of climate change, which means we are doomed, no matter how we see it, like the saying goes, uh, no matter how angry the rat is, it will not stop the cat from eating it. Is that a situation we find ourselves now, that no matter what we do, it is still going to befall us? Because if there is something that we can do, then there should be some people that should take some blame, apart from government. So if we are blaming the government that they didn't do some things, are there no things that the individuals could have done, the, the other citizens could have done to avoid this kind of flood? Take, for instance, for Lagos. There are some places that you find um, drainages that have been made and are filled to the brim, not, with, not by government, but by the people. So by just giving a blanket uh, ex explanation, it seems as if nothing can be done. Yes, you know, I've, I've, I've raised it in my prologue that um, the, it's a collective blame, not just a one-sided blame. The way the government is blaming the citizens, that's why I raise it back to the government, that this is not a matter, it's a matter of sheer blame. It's a sheer blame because of the, nowadays, where is our National Orientation Agency? At this critical point in time, the National Orientation Agency through medium, we know Lagos State Government is doing a whole lot in orientation, media uh, progress in ensuring there are proper adverts on not blocking of drainage, on disposal of refuse, on keeping the environment clean. But in as much as this all are there, uh, uh, information is clear, clear, our citizens are lackadaisical with their ineptitude and they are, they are, they are, they are, they are uh, I don't care spirits, which they believe that they know too much. Oh, what do you have to, oh, is this just this one uh, paper I'm dropping on the, in the gutter that will block the whole system? If you drop, another person drop, that becomes a debris. Nigerians need to be orientated. That community engagement, that is where we are now coming in now. Clearing of drainages, clearing of some community, citizens ought to also shift and roll up their sleeves and get to work. Not just environmental day. There are no more environmental days in Lagos. So it makes everybody more lazy that you don't count, you can't even clear gutter. When we are growing up on the Lagos Island, when it's already last Saturday of the month, you see everybody clearing gutter. You go inside with your rain boots, clear the entire drainage. And, and maybe maybe before the days runs out, the 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 way the poster people will come clear the entire debris and dump it at the right places but nowadays you go to even fine environment as beautiful as lucky is you still see people dumping in the gutters and these are attitude that people only need proper orientation from their churches mocks these are what we should be teaching our children at home on proper uh, 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 maybe disposing of their refuse, how you need to tie it up, because Nigeria just like quick fix. You see a lot of Nigerians as educated as they are. Once they are going in the morning, they pack all their dirty in their boots and drop it in the middle of the road. This attitude are uh, so uh, 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 is a bad attitude, and we cannot we cannot overemphasize its effect, the overall effect, when we have disasters like this. Because the only thing, if we are prepared, it will only mitigate a channel for the flood to pass through. But when there are no channel, the flood becomes your albatross, whereby you cannot longer have an escape route. So the situation that is affecting a lot of those communities is not because of this old incidents we've mentioned, but mostly, just as I've rightly said, is a natural cause. If okay. it happens, the best we can always do is to pray for God to mitigate for us. But we too have duties to keep the earth clean. Okay, uh, well, most of the things we're talking about are the things we need to do when these things have already happened, like the flood has happened. But we've seen that, okay, maybe we are not hearing enough information, but the kind of flooding we've experienced in Nigeria is not the same in Cameroon, for instance, or in Niger, or in Benin Republic, which means maybe there's something they're doing better than we are doing. Now, 
you've talked about orientation and you gave kudos to Lagos State that they've been doing some orientation and asking people not to dump refuse inside the drainages and all that, which means whatever the government is doing may not be enough. Now, you are a part of uh, uh, worldwide organizations, you know. You are a part of the uh, Yoruba Council worldwide. You are also a part of the NBA, and even you talked about uh, a lawyer cannot go to the court with his robe and everything because of what is happening. And then you are also in ethnic nationalities uh, worldwide. You are part of the Youth Leaders Council. What will you be doing deliberately as these organizations that I've mentioned, not you as a person, but as these organizations who are supposed to be closer to the grassroots than even the government? Do you have a deliberate policy, a deliberate uh, step that you intend to take to give the needed orientation to the people of Nigeria so that they will be more informed about how to keep their environments clean? I mean, they say 30 states out of 36, but other data is saying 32 states out of 36, and that is quite a lot of uh, states that have been affected. So what will you be doing from here on out to make sure if this kind of a thing comes, it will not be this kind of magnitude? Well, uh, well, as a matter of information, now uh, 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 recently there is this um, uh, summit held by the Lagos State Government here in Beti, which is the economic summit for Lagos by uh, being organized yearly by the Lagos State Government. At that summit, I had an engagement with the MD of Loma uh, on critical areas of synergy that as lawyers, the MBA, uh, you need to draw up an uh, area of uh, legal um, and legislative reviews of some um, um, impact assessment on... Go on. Can we, hear you. Yeah. We discussed with the, with the MD of Loma um, from the stable of the MBA as a sector. So, and as Secretary General of the Nigerian Ethnic Nationalities, uh, we are planning a, a, a national summit uh, soon by November. Uh, we know we've been doing a whole lot internally, passing information on safety, on rescue, on ensuring that uh, we play active engagement. But it's not enough for just one body. That is why I'm passing it out that these are information every age, uh, 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 institution from the home to the church, so we are playing our role, and part of it is what I must commend Plus uh, TV in doing, because these are corporate social responsibility by informing the general public on the dangers ahead. So we need to take active role. We need to declare national holiday for people to prepare for homes and drainages that are not cleared before. For you know the risk of say oh the 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 water level is rising in the uh, from, uh, in the ocean and the third mainland and all this, we should not just be seeing the risk. Hold our hands are killing for the dangers will will rapture all of us. So and no one is safe. Look at how this incident is happening. It has even our own is even more better. It is not a tsunami scenario that you would have seen how how risky would our, our matter would have been like. We thank God that it is just flooding. It is not a high-risk density environment like U.S. that by now they'll be confronted with a tsunami scenario. As prepared as U.S. are, they still, they still have loss of life, properties, not because they don't have government, not because their people are not responsive, but this is a matter of nature. And it is only God that we have to pray on to. But be that as it may, we on our own part as citizens, the government not just need to declare a state of emergency, but they need to declare a national week holiday for all of us to prepare our home, not to be caught unaware. Areas whereby we need to clear, let, them, let everybody clear, let everybody engage, let everybody buy uh, um, shovel, not just the Loma people that are workers that can do it all. We all are energetic, Nigerians are energetic. As far as I'm a lawyer too, I can hold my shovel, a, a doctor can do the same, an accountant can do the same. So we all need to engage the situation and see how we can um, ensure that the risk level when this disaster happens can be properly mitigated and managed. 
Okay, but as the MBA, are you pushing for legislation for some of these things that you're calling? Because some of these things, we cannot use words of mouth. For instance, a uh, state of emergency, for instance, uh, some laws that will make people stay at home on some days to clear the environment and all that, this might need some legislation, some laws that will go as a body. Mm -hmm. Do you do things like that in interacting with the government? Is there an engagement with the government or do you hope to engage? Yes, yeah, that's part of what I just informed that uh, uh, I personally had a one on one discussion with the MD, President MD of Loma, and uh, we had a very um, succinct uh, discourse for us to prepare for a joint summit whereby we can consider areas whereby we need to improve on. Unfortunately, uh, the, the Saturdays, uh, environmental Saturday that we used to have was only. Um, um, uh, determined by a court of competent jurisdiction by a lawyer that went to court and say it is not uh, legal. Though it was a moral, a moral and ethical um, value that the government of the then days planned us to have the every Saturday um, environmental sanitation day as last Saturday of the month. But because of some interest of some persons who just believe that maybe because they cannot attend their parties or do some other things or the way they have been arrested for going out, uh, out early, they challenged it. And the court um, banned uh, uh, the government from holding every Saturday in Lagos last Saturday. But this time around, what the government ought to do is that even if we have to declare this whole thing, let us look at how we are we need to monitor it is not it shouldn't be a coercive uh, measure but there should be some deliberate main uh, manner whereby every saturday you see mr governor himself clearing dirty if the head is clearing what will all of us be doing we'll join in when the hobbers are also part of it and at least i saw the the um, maybe Oba Oluwo, no matter how people might have credited him or discredited him, I saw him still clearing the bush of his community. And when the community saw him clearing that, they joined. When the citizens of the community saw, they joined him. That is living by example. We cannot do everything. We cannot tell government to do all. Governance is government of the people for the people and by the people, meaning the government, people in the government and those of us at the electorate side, we are all commons before the law. So not just because we don't have good laws in Lagos State that regulate this uh, old scenario, but the execution of the law is also one thing. Corruption is also part of those things that impede when you, if maybe somebody commit a uh, an environmental breach tomorrow, you just go to police and bribe. We just do anything to compromise the system. So this whole system needs a proper orientation. It's more or less of an attitudinal orientation than force. We need to believe. That's why I said if a church pastor, like I'm so sorry, a general pastor of one of these big churches or big uh, Afa or Imam, give a directive that today, before you go to work, for you for God to bless you abundantly, keep your environment clean. Make sure you carry debris. Make sure you are part of those that clean the gutters. And that will be recorded as part of your goodness that you are doing on earth. You will see the entire street flooded with people because they believe strongly in messages from those people. So the government needs to engage those institutions in order to pass some subtle messages not to deceive the people, but for the people to be actively involved in cleaning their immediate environment and making the earth a, a, an habitable place for all of us to live in. Okay, from your talk, it means, like the good book says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So all of us will have to put our hands on deck to make sure that this never happens again. Government and the people would like to say thank you to you, uh, Mr. Hassan, for coming on the program. Thank you very much for the time. Thank you very much for staying with us on Plus Politics.